morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. It's nice to worship with you again. As you look in your bulletins, you see the background of our worship is the angels' praise. The angels praise the Lord in a variety of different ways throughout the Bible, and we take some of those songs and some of those words, we use them for our worship today. On the front of your bulletins, that is the major theme, the main thing that we'll be talking about, and that is the rest that we have in Jesus. On page two, officially, we begin, and I ask you to please stand, as we sing God Himself, His presence, and as we follow along with the word, you'll notice that we will also say a few prayers in between these verses. In the vision of Revelation, 
The disciple John saw and heard the angels praise the Lord. <clears throat> then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne, and in a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. All the angels were standing around the throne. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks, and honor and power and strength, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. Amen. You may be seated. We start in God's Word with Exodus chapter 33. This is a promise from the Lord to Moses and his people Israel that he would give them rest. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me and lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found faith with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me in this. This is the word of the Lord. I've cut out a few of the songs in between these readings just because we are wearing masks, so we're kind of cutting down on the singing a little bit, so we're going back to back to back these three scripture readings today, which is okay because it helps us focus in on the connection between all three of them. The second scripture reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, and the writer to the Hebrews takes this idea of rest for the Old Testament Israelites, and he tells us, how it applies to us today, just as they had a Sabbath rest on Saturday, and they had a rest in the land of Canaan when they got to the promised land, so we are looking forward to a rest as well. Therefore, he writes, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard it did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said, So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day God rested 
from all of his work. And again in the passage above he says, they shall never enter my rest. It still remains that some will enter that rest. And those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Therefore God again sent a certain day, calling it today. When a long time later he spoke through David as was said before, today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest. This is the word of the Lord. We stand at the respect for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel of our Savior comes from the Gospel of Matthew today, chapter 11. Jesus continues this theme about giving us rest. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We sing together the next song is the hymn Jesus Lead Us On, page 9.
We drove over 4,000 miles across eight different states. Six changes of overnight accommodations, 27 different family members, plenty of games outside, plenty of games inside, birthday parties, good food, late nights. I need some rest. It was fun, don't get me wrong. It's nice to spend time with my immediate family and this extended family, but after all that social interaction and all that travel, I need some rest. Now I'm not the only one, of course. Any traveler needs rest. That's why as you go along any interstate in our country, you have those little pull-ups to the side of the road called rest areas. Vending machines, bathrooms, picnic tables, and maybe a few other odds and ends give cross-country travelers a chance to stretch their legs and go to the bathroom and take a break from the hours and the hours that they spend in their vehicles. There's some truck drivers that spend overnight there, of course, but most of those travelers just spend a few minutes at these rest areas and then they're ready to go on to the next location. And sometimes that's all it takes. Just a little bit of a reprieve just a little bit of a break to give you enough energy to move on. I'm sure most of us in this room could use a break from a whole wide variety of different things and not just the exhaustion that's brought about by an extended family vacation. Some of you might need a break from your job right now. The monotony, the responsibilities, your co-workers, management, some of you might need a break from the people that you live with right now. That person is really getting on your nerves and the relationship is getting a little bit strained. I'm sure all of us could use a little bit of break from this COVID-19 deal that has upturned our country for these last few months. The months and months and months of predictions and changes and policies. Wouldn't it be nice to have a break? Just a little bit of reprieve, a little bit of rest from the craziness before you're thrown back into the fray once again. Sometimes we need a break from life. We don't always get the breaks or the rest that we're hoping for, though, do we? After months and months of executive orders and adjustments to our lifestyle, there is no real end in sight, which means there's no real rest in sight either. We don't know how long this is going to go on. And the people that you live with, 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 live with right now are probably people that you're going to continue to live with for the foreseeable future, and so there's no rest in sight there either. And you still have to keep going to your job. And you still have to keep going to those doctor's appointments. And you still have to keep paying those bills. And you still have to keep dealing with all the issues that are surrounding you every single day. And there doesn't seem to be any rest in sight. And the pressure and the stress and the strain keep weighing down so that there's no break whatsoever. There are moments, there are those precious few times where you're able to be by yourself and relax a little. In those moments where you can kind of unwind and decompress, but they don't last long, do they? They slip by without you hardly noticing that they were there. And you're back into the thick of things before you even know it. But that is the goal of many people in our country, to find a little bit of rest, a little bit of a break, a little bit of reprieve, some of that spawns itself into some very unhealthy habits and drugs and alcohol. Some of them are healthy habits and activities and hobbies. Everyone wants a little bit of rest. Unfortunately for me, there is one thing that I cannot see. No matter how hard I try, I cannot get a break from this one thing. And that's me. I need a break from myself sometimes. I get sick and tired of who I am all of the time. Almost every day I end up thinking to myself, you did that again? How could you? 
You said that again? Why did you do that? You acted like that again? You were some kind of Christian. Because I know exactly what I'm supposed to do and exactly what I'm supposed to say and exactly how I'm supposed to act, but I don't do it. Not all the time. And certainly not as good as I ought to do it. And what I'm really getting at is this. I get just as frustrated with myself as you get with yourself. In the morning you get up and you look in the mirror and you probably glance at yourself in the mirror throughout the day and then at night you look at yourself in the mirror again and what do you see? You see plenty of flaws and imperfections, don't you? And not just on the outside either because you know your flaws and your imperfections better than almost anyone else around you. And it can be disgusting. You look at yourself in the mirror and you kind of shake your head and think, who are you? I tried so hard today, but look where I ended up. I wanted it so much better, but look what I ended up doing anyway. And you get sick looking at yourself. And you get sick of being around yourself. And you kind of need a break from yourself, but you can't. You need a rest from you. No matter what it is that stresses you out, whether it's yourself, or politics, or health, or finances, or family, or work, Jesus is the answer to them all. It might not seem like it at first. It might seem like Jesus is over here in this category, in your life and all your problems are over here in this category, and they don't really mesh except for on Sunday morning. It's true. Jesus is the answer to them all. No matter what is suffocating your senses, no matter what kind of guilt is weighing down on your heart, Jesus is the only person you actually need because Jesus says exactly what you need to hear every single time. Hear Jesus' words to you right now. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You need some rest, you need a break. You need a chance for the clouds to dissipate and the noise to be still. Then you need Jesus. Come to me, he says. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Go to Jesus. And how do you go to Jesus? Well, as Christians, if you're going to go to Jesus to talk to him, that means you're going to Jesus in prayer. Speak to him, whether out loud or in your head, and he's going to hear it. Really doesn't even matter what you say or how you say it, he's going to hear it. It could be a jumble of emotions and feelings spewing out of your mouth of one big hot mess, but he's going to hear it. It could be a fleeting thought that flits through your mind in a half second, but he's going to hear it. It could be a stream of consciousness that is filled with anxieties and worries that has been pent up inside of you for so long that it comes rushing out in such rapid succession that you can't even keep up with it. But he's going to hear it. Even if you're saying the same prayer a thousand times over, he's going to listen again. Even if you have to pray to the Lord in years, he's going to listen again. Even if you don't know how to pray. Even if you don't know if you've ever prayed to your Lord before. He's going to listen. And he's not just going to listen. He's actually going to do something about it. He doesn't always give you everything you ask for. Of course, because he's going to give you what he knows is best for you. And he might not always reveal his answer to you right away. But you can be confident that he will take 
your cries and your concerns into consideration of that he's going to act accordingly. And no matter what, every time you go to your Lord, every time you cry out to him, every time you pray to him, he will give you rest. Doesn't mean he's going to take all of your problems away. But it does mean that he's going to help you deal with these problems and manage these issues and give you a broader perspective on his plans and on his will so that your heart will be instilled with a peace that you can't get anywhere else. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you. Rest. And he gives you rest through his word. You go to him to talk to him in prayer, but you go to him to listen to him in the Bible. There in those pages that have been dictated by the Holy Spirit himself, preserved by the Lord from the first day until now, that cover the millennia of God's grace for his people, you will find rest. There in the pages of the Bible you will find a God who is so patient with His people that no matter how many times we sin against Him, He calls us back again and again. There in the pages of the Bible you will find a God who is so merciful to His people that no matter how many times we give Him the cold shoulder, He cannot help but long for our return. There in the pages of the Bible you will find a God who is so loving so caring, so compassionate, so forgiving, that he looks at you and he says, I want to be with that human being forever. So I'm going to send my own son to that world, purposely to be punished, specifically to suffer. So that he's going to be tortured, not just on that earth, he's going to be tortured in hell. There in the pages of the Bible, you're going to find God the Father, Making God the Son die before He rose from the dead and gained the victory. There in the pages of the Bible, you're going to find the Son of God who carried it all, who bore it all, who absorbed it all. There in the pages of the Bible, you're going to find God the Father taking the load off your shoulders and putting it on Christ. The guilt off your heart and putting it on Christ. The weight off your conscience and putting it on Christ. And there in the Bible, you are going to find Jesus in his cross, in his tomb, and his throne, and his words come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And just so that there is no confusion, kids. I say yoke, I'm not talking about the yellowish, orange middle of an egg. I'm talking about that wooden collar that hung around the necks and the shoulders of oxen as they dragged farming implements through the dirt. The yoke became a symbol of the burdens that we carry around and our self-imposed yoke was filled with sin and shame and guilt. Our wooden yoke was shattered by the wooden cross. And in its place, Jesus gives us His yoke. And His yoke is nothing. He has forgiven us for everything. And he requires of us nothing. That's why his yoke is easy and his burden is light because he places nothing on our shoulders. He is taking care of it all. And then he promises that he is going to give us an eternal rest of paradise and you don't have to do anything for it. Isn't that freeing? Isn't that a beautiful sense of peace and release? Jesus is taking care of it all. There's nothing you have to care of anymore. 
And there, where that yoke was once on your shoulder, Jesus puts his arm on your shoulder. He says, I know you're struggling. I know you're dealing with a lot of issues and difficulties right now. I know you're stressed out. I know you're worried. And I know you're anxious. But it's going to be okay. Because I care for you. I want to be with you forever in heaven. So I'm going to hold you in my arms, and I'm going to protect you, and I'm going to provide you, and one day I'm going to take you home. And I'm not just going to give you rest here, I'm going to give you rest in heaven. Because that's who I am. I am your God, and you are my child. So come to me, you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. But you're only going to hear that from your Lord in the pages of His Word. That is where you're going to see your God for who He really is. That is where you're going to read about what He has done for your rest now, now He's secured your rest for eternity. And I know that it's easy for me to stand up here and say, you really should read your life. It's a little harder to put that into practice, isn't it? So let me give you an encouragement. This week, if you need some rest, if you need a break, if you need a little bit of a reprieve from this life, read the last half of the book of Luke. Start at Luke 15 and go to the end, chapter 24. If you read just two chapters a day, you'll get done with it in five days. Start tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You'll be done. And you will read stories about Jesus' parables that talk about His love. And Jesus' sermons that talk about His will. And Jesus' miracles about His power. And Jesus' actions that solidify your salvation. And as you read through these stories, ask yourself these questions. Why did the Holy Spirit have this written down for me? Because He did. What does this have to do with God's love and His power and His grace? Because it does. Finally, how does this story give me rest? Because it will. But that's just five days. After you're done with that, you need something else. Go to the Psalms. Any Psalm at any time. There are 150 of them in the Bible. Some of them are going to hit your heart more than others. But they are filled with gospel gems that will occupy your mind and your heart for hours if you want them to. Highlight your favorite passages, underline key words and phrases, even jot down notes and questions with pencil in the margins of your Bible. Make the Psalms your own because the Psalms were written for you. The Psalms were written for your rest. And after that, if you want more, ask me. There are plenty of different chapters and books and specific verses in the Bible to deal with specific problems in your life. What I'm getting at is use God's word as the rest areas along the interstate. Pull off to the side of the road on a regular basis because you're going to need it. I know you're busy. I know you're in a hurry. I know you have places to go, things to do, but you need to take care of your faith. You need to make sure that you are getting the rest and the relaxation and the breaks that you need for your spiritual well-being because this journey is perilous already. You don't need to make it harder than it already is. Take your word up on this offer. Trust in what He promises. And keep clinging to everything that He gives you. Come to me, He says. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And I will give you rest. Amen. He said. We still are not passing the offering plates if you want to give an offering. Wait back there, wait in back. You can give online if you are so inclined to do so, if you have been doing that before. 
as we go on with our worship, we continue on teaching about them. You see, it's a song to you I make confession. This is a song about confessing our sins to the Lord and hearing the announcement of forgiveness. We once again have some words interspersed with the music on pages 12 and 13. We've sung this several times before, so I'm confident that we jump right in with this first verse. Remember, it's a little bit slower, though. Take some time, not only sing these words, but think about what you are singing. We are going in front of the Lord as sinful human beings, asking for Him to be merciful to us, and knowing that He will. We sing and we read these words together.
trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I will show mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. In Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Amen.
the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to give to death for your sins. Blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the death for your sins. Take a drink. This is the true blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Thank 
and to keep you in the true faith of life everlasting. You may depart in peace because your sins are forgiven. We close with those words of blessing that the Lord gives us. I made this true body, the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. May live your life in peace because your sins are forgiven. Thank you. 
Good morning again. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for wearing masks, even though it's a pain. Even though we have to comply with state regulations, hopefully that's going to ease up in the near future. We can get back to kind of regular worship. We can get a little more, a few more seats filled with more people, and we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming. If you look on page 18 on the upcoming schedule, notice that I've got August 23rd set aside for our annual outdoor worship service. I'm sure that we'll be able to go on as usual, just meet out back like usual. We can sit in the chairs provided, or you can bring your own chair, bring hats if you want, just in case you don't want to sit in the sun. But there's always kind of a kind of a neat worship service. So we'll be out there on the 23rd. In a couple weeks from now, we will be taking Emma to school. I've talked to quite a few of you about it before. Jessica has talked to quite a few of you about it before as well. Just as an explanation, just to answer some questions that we normally get. We normally get the question, why? Emma's going to be going to one of our Lutheran high schools. Uh, throughout the country, and this one happens to be in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And the question again is, why? Why there? That's a great question. So let me answer this. We have we have high schools throughout our country. One we have actually one in Denver, but it's not a dorm school, so we need to find someone to house her for the duration of the school year. That's not always possible. We have a dorm school in Nebraska, which is closer mile wise. We have a dorm school in California, just outside of Los Angeles. We have a school in Phoenix, but it's not a dorm school. So there, there are various ones throughout the city, and there are many more that I haven't mentioned. We have talked about for years about sending Emma and the rest of her kids to one of our Luther high schools, not because we want to get rid of them, not because we don't like them, because as you would well know, we have some great kids, and Emma is an outstanding young woman. It's nice to have her now. But Jessica and I have determined that we'd rather sacrifice some time with her for the sake of her faith, that she, so that she's surrounded by God's word constantly on a regular basis. And of course, she gets that here, she gets that at home, but it's going to be a little bit different in high school. She'll actually have those pastors and teachers in her church body to teach every single class every single day. And even though there's still certainly plenty of sin in those high schools, just like there is anywhere else, at least it's going to be dealt with in a Christian way and in a, in a way that we would want it to be dealt with. And we aren't, uh, we aren't making her go either. We've talked to her about it. We've asked her questions. She had the option of staying here and going to a high school here in Montrose. But she wants to go there too because she understands the benefit for her faith that she's going to be taught by those pastors and teachers in the Word of God, even in those classes like math and especially science and reading and English and everything else. So it's going to be a positive one. But the question still remains why why Minneapolis of all places? One of the main reasons is my brother, my youngest brother, teaches there. And so he is going to be able to see her on a regular basis. She'll be able to go over to his house um, whenever she wants. She has three cousins over there that she can hang out with too. As far as travel is concerned, we're able to drive to Denver, fly to Minneapolis in short order, and we're relatively cheap, so we can see her and bring her back on a regular basis, too. And so that just seems to be financially a better option than driving back and forth to Los Angeles one way, or Nebraska the other way, and not really having anyone to stay with or anything like that. Uh, certainly, if we Welcome. Any more questions? I just wanted to give you kind of an overview of some of the conversations and some of the questions that we've been having over the past year or so as we're preparing for this big decision. So he's obviously going to be back and forth uh, throughout the year. She'll be back at Thanksgiving for a week, and Christmas, and spring break, and the entire summer, so you will be able to see her still. Like I said, if you have questions or anything, just let me know. I'd be glad to explain anything that is confusing or take any complaints when you have any as well. Is there anything that I'm forgetting to say today? 
Have a good rest of your day. Hope you can join us again. You do notice that some of the seats are empty because not everyone is coming back to worship. That's okay. At least invite them to see the sermon online or the entire worship service online. Invite them here if they would like to come. This is a key time to invite people to hear God's word, whether in, in person or online. Do not hesitate to do that because a lot of people need rest. A lot of people need a break, a reprieve from the things that are going on. This is the perfect place to do that, and God's word is the only thing that's going to give that to them. Take every advantage of it right now. Do not wait till all of this kind of settles down. It's too late to do it now. Have a good rest of your day. Hope to see you again soon. I hope we can get back into Bible class again soon. I will let you know when that happens. Have a good rest of your day.